Go. Hey everybody, my name is Jim Austin with Jim Austin Online, CEO. Uh, we're here in my office is in the uh, Western Heritage Center, which we have home of the uh, Jim Austin Online, the Austin Company, National Multicultural Western Heritage Museum, and our podcast recording studio. We are now taping the Austin file, which is a podcast that keeps you abreast of what's going on in the North Texas. It also keeps you abreast of commercial real estate, which that's uh, what I do, the Austin Company Commercial Real Estate. And we interview bi-weekly interesting people. And today in my studio, we have Ernest Marsh. Good to be here. Thank you very much. It's good to see you, Ernest. We've um, been introduced by a mutual friend, Art Burton. That's correct. Art Burton is a legend. Art's in my Hall of Fame, and he is the um, authority of uh, the history of the great uh, Deputy Marshal Bass Reeves. So today, we're going to be talking about that legendary Deputy Marshal Bass Reeves, who rounded up bad guys for 30 years. He was 6'2", had a black horse, sidekick Native America, American, and he was a sharpshooter. And uh, he's a legend in the West. And my friend uh, Ernest, who's out of Tyler, portrays Bass Reeves. So uh, Ernest, let's jump in there about where you grew up what brought you into reenactment and you know um i know you're six two the same height as bass reeves and you're a actor and uh, just a historian so let, let's talk about you first you know and how we got here it's growing up in san francisco uh as a cowboy people say well there are no cowboys in san francisco where i grew up yeah, there was cowboys in San Francisco. Uh, my father's from West Louisiana, South Mansfield, and my mother is from Waco. So I grew up uh, with the best of both worlds uh, in the Southern culture. And that's how we were raised in, in California. Uh, never came to riding horses. Uh, we rented horses by the hour, wherever and whenever we could. And it was always a passion of mine to uh, eventually uh, be known as a cowboy. Uh, I grew up uh, renting horses by the hour uh, on the beach of the Pacific Ocean. Uh, I'd ride them 22 miles back into San Francisco to Golden Gate Park and uh, look forward to actually getting there to be able to uh, have a horse race around the uh, polo field uh, there in Golden Gate Park. Wow, you know, living on the West Coast, mm -hmm. I've spent a lot of time in San Francisco, L.A., and did that coast from San Diego Correct. up to Oregon, man, on that Route 1. Yes. Yeah. Whoa, what, what, what a deal. What a deal. And um, doing that you know, brought you to Texas, and you're involved in the Western history, and you're a uh, expert or a noted actor and historian on Bass Reeves. So tell us how you got to Texas and I know you got a little well, my story, ranch. Yeah, my story in uh, getting back to Texas is uh, my mother's from Waco. My okay. mother's from Waco, Texas. And uh, working in California, uh, I was an administrator for the, for the state of California and uh, I would play uh, on my office phone country music. And uh, people <laughs> thought that was a little bizarre for uh, a man of color to be playing country music as the elevator music on the, for the phone that when you put it on hold. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so uh, I was told in California, uh, Northern California, up in uh, Reading, uh, I was a member of the Reading Rodeo Association, and I was told after a rodeo that there were no black cowboys. And uh, it happened to be uh, at a after party for one of the rodeos and was approached uh, in regards to why I was there, why I was present. And it led to a, <coughs> a bar fight 
uh, because my good friend uh, stood up and said uh, to this other gentleman, uh, is there a problem? And the story is, is that when we were talking, uh, <coughs> he said, yeah, there is a problem because uh, you're talking to him and therefore the, the problem is with me too. And with that, uh, my friend who was white <coughs> uh, had a beer bottle uh, broken on the bar by the, uh, the other guy and actually cut his neck from ear to ear. <coughs> and he had to be life lighted out. Uh, so with that, I made it a, a purpose to let people know that black cowboys uh, do exist. And what got me to Texas was there was a more of an acceptance of black cowboys, uh, <clears throat> being that black old cowboys originated in, in Texas, uh, in, the, in the South. So to me, uh, that was my main motivation was leaving the state of California and coming to, uh, to Texas. Well, you're a pretty nice sized guy, you know, so I wouldn't think a lot of people would like to pick a fight with you, sir. You know, is that... The cowboys are cowboys. I mean, <clears throat> cowboys, are, regardless of what color you are, you're always going to challenge. You're always going to, uh, you know, try to, you know, be that top cowboy. Why I refer to myself as Top Waddy. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, being a cowboy is <clears throat> true an American way. In, in in the country, we celebrate the American cowboy the fourth Saturday in July, and that's when we do our Hall of Fame induction ceremony. You know, to bring in the past history of the past, present, and future. And I was so blessed to have you attend our Hall of yes. Fame yeah, induction true. ceremony when uh, we inducted uh, six heroes, uh, Oba Babatuvi. And, you know, I mean, there was was six of them, you know, and you were there representing uh, Bass Reeves, sir. Right. Bass Reeves, uh, <clears throat> when I first started in California as a Buffalo Soldier reenactor uh, and also James Beckworth, uh, James Pearson Beckworth were an actor. Uh, someone said, uh, well, you look like Bass Reeves. And I said, well, yes, I do after I saw the picture. And they asked me if I was related. And I said, no, I'm not related to the best of my knowledge. Um, and I guess it's the, the bushy mustache is what really gets people, is that uh, Bass Reeves was known for his, for his uh, bushy mustache. Um, you know, Bass Reeves was six foot two. I'm six foot two. Bass Reeves was 190 pi, uh, 90 pounds and 95 pounds. I'm the same. So we have the same stature. So uh, <clears throat> being that Bass was uh, a person that no one really knew, uh, but he had an exceptional meritorious career. Uh, 35 years uh, was his career. 32 years as a U.S. Deputy Marshal and three years as a uh, Muscogee, Oklahoma policeman. So it took me a long time to understand the history and, and, and acquire that knowledge. And that's where uh, Dr. R. T. Burton uh, Turk um, came in with his books, you know, uh, <clears throat> Black Gun, Silver Star, and the other book is... Uh, Red Bat, Black and Deadly correct. with Art. Correct. Yeah, and then uh, Paul Brady has a book, The Black Badge. That's correct. You know. So um, trying to, to get those stories, uh, where you get factual historical information and not, you know, the, the non-fictional novels, uh, which is, there are many out there, but to actually get the true history of Bass Reeves, uh, his life and times. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why uh, I established a relationship with Mr. Burton so that I can uh, learn uh, accurately in regards to wardrobe, in regards to, uh, you know, the attire from the boots to the hat. Uh, and also <clears throat> firearms uh, that Bass carried. Uh, Bass was ambidextrous, he used his left hand and his right hand, therefore he carried uh, two pistols, but he did not start off carrying two pistols. He, he started off with one. Uh, and that was a learned, uh, something that he learned and acquired that when he was out there in the Indian Territory, he had to have uh, armament. 
<laughs> to be able to see more than six shots. <laughs> <laughs> that is so true. I mean, they say he was notorious for always getting his man, uh, lived in the Indian Territory, had a sidekick, a Native American, and uh, he was understandably uh, a master of disguises. That's correct. Bass uh, was not known to, to <clears throat> riding a black horse. He was known for white riding a white horse. But black horses, red horses, uh, were part of his, uh, we call it a remuda, uh, a herd of horses that he would take with him. Because okay. he, uh, once he left Fort Smith, Arkansas, uh, which is uh, into the Indian Territory, they crossed the river, um, the Indian Territory comprised uh, of a lawless, it was a lawless land. So uh, it's just like you driving today, uh, your car, and mm -hmm. your car, uh, people know you from driving a certain car. Bass had more than one horse, so therefore he could change up and disguise himself more so. That makes a lot of sense. You know, everybody knows Jim Austin drives the Grand Marquis. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's right. Jim, they know Jim by the hat, cowboy Correct. hat, Correct. but it's how I enjoy, you know, somewhat being a cowboy, but I'm old Jersey boy, but I'm also a farm boy from North Carolina, but, you know, I got my boots, my hat, my gun, you know, and I don't have a horse, but I can borrow friends' horses. Absolutely. You know. So Bass, when he was in the territory, uh, he had in his saddlebag, uh, you know, his writs, his warrants. Um, Bass could not read. Bass could not write. And therefore, he was illiterate. But he, when you have a, a fault or a handicap, you have to compensate, you know, uh, somewhere else. And this compensation was an excellent memory. And those warrants were read to him, and he would file them away into his writ book. And he was never... He, he never brought in the wrong person. He, he never uh, got the wrong warrant out of his writ book. Uh, even though he could not read, uh, he pulled that writ out of his saddlebags, his writ book, and his uh, modus operandi, in other words, how did he get this writ served properly? Well, I would give it to you and say, read it. <laughs> I say, read this writ. Wow, wow. And in doing so, uh, as you would look down and take your uh, attention off of me, I would, being a man by dexterous, I would grab you by the throat with my left hand. Yes. And come up with my right hand. <laughs> and I would say, I'm here to arrest you. <laughs> You know, I mean, Bass Reeves, 35 years, was truly a legend within the Texas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas. Correct. Uh, he started off in uh, Arkansas uh, because what happened, the Oklahoma uh, was a territory. Um, Oklahoma Territory, you can go back before that, it was the Indian Territory. Uh, for the five civilized tribes. And the five civilized tribes also brought their slaves with them uh, into the Indian Territory. Uh, so there was a mixture of people in the Indian Territory. When Bass uh, <coughs> fled into the Indian Territory as a result of having an argument with this uh, slave owner, uh, George Reeves, uh, during the Civil War, uh, he crossed the uh, Red River back into uh, the Indian Territory, which is now the present day uh, Oklahoma, where he was there for a number of years, uh, learning the language, learning the land, learning the people. So when slavery was over as a result of emancipation, proclamation, civil war was over, uh, Bass was relied upon as a resource. Uh, Bass knew the land, knew the people, <coughs> and spoke the languages. Uh, so Judge Isaac Parker, Took, took note of that. Um, Bass was already a scout uh, for the U.S. Marshals uh, when they were based in, in uh, Arkansas, Van Buren, Arkansas. And 
when Judge Parker was appointed by Ulysses S. Grant, <coughs> uh, the president, Judge Isaac Parker said, yeah, I'll, I'll take that job, but there's only one condition. And that one condition is there is no appeal. There's no appeal to my decision once I render it on the bench. And President Grant agreed to that. So when Isaac Parker got to Fort Smith, Arkansas, he uh, was authorized, you know, uh, 200 deputies to hire, but they weren't all hired at the same time. Okay. They were not hired. It was not 200 deputies, maybe 50 at the most, and that circulated throughout his, his tenure. But one of the first people that Isaac Parker said, I need is Bass Reeves. And uh, Bass Reeves was sworn in and became a U.S. Deputy Marshal uh, in Fort Smith, Arkansas, uh, 1875. With that, 32 year career, it's documented that he arrested over 3,000 people. That's where Art Burton comes in because Art Burton has <coughs> gone back and researched uh, for decades, for decades, the, the historical court records. In other words, the court clerk either sealed the dockets after the arrest of people that Bass Reeves arrested people that were uh, sentenced or even hung by uh, Judge Isaac Parker, which is known uh, in some circles, most circles, as an iron judge uh, Parker, as, but we know it as hanging judge. Uh, and there's a famous scene uh, in the movie True Grit uh, where Isaac Parker is hanging uh, six men at one time. Oh, hell. Yes, <laughs> and that and that was Judge Parker. Uh, Judge Parker was saying to people in the Indian Territory, the outlaws, and I call them the the countenancy outlaws, the felons, the fleeing felons, people that knew that they were on the run. Um, the only way that he could stop that was to let them know that there was certainty of punishment. Wow, certainty of punishment, <clears throat> and Bass being the person that he is, uh, he was a religious man, uh, and he stood by that. And when I say he stood by that, Bass was a free man. He was no longer a slave. But the only duty he had, the only master he had was the law itself. And um, he lived by it, and um, to a, what a career. Yeah, Bass lived by the letter <laughs> of the law uh, to the point where he arrested his own son for murder. He lived by the letter of the law, and he arrested his own preacher uh, for bootlegging. Okay. So it, it could have been anyone. Uh, he would have arrested him. And it's like the moral standard there is it didn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't matter. You broke the law. Uh, the only thing you could do was run. And if you ran, guess who was going to get you and bring you back? Pass Reeves. Pass Reeves. <laughs> That's for, sure. That's for sure. I know you've done other projects. You mentioned the Buffalo Soldier, and I've seen some of those pieces. You are now an extra in the uh, Yellowstone, 1883? Correct, correct. Yeah, yeah I, I was fortunate uh, to be a part of the, the uh, Paramount, uh, Viacom CBS Paramount. Um, it started with Yellowstone, uh, the original Yellowstone, and I'm in season four uh, as a cowboy. Uh, an extra, an extra in the background, uh, but also featured, which feature means that uh, they pick you out of the crowd and your face is going to be shown. Um, and the same thing with uh, why 1883. And um, not only am I a, a black cowboy in the first Yellowstone, and also a black cowboy in Yellowstone's Y 1883. I'm also a stand-in for Monica Garrett, okay. who is uh, a featured uh, big-time cast member, and uh, he's the site. He's the right-hand man of uh, Sam Elliott, who is uh, who is known as Shay, okay. and uh, Monica Garrett's character is known as Thomas. Wow! Wow! And that's going right here in the stockyard. Uh, give everybody your website and your email if someone. Has some comments. For my, uh, you can do my IMDb uh, is Ernest Marsh, E R N E S T M A R S H, 
uh, go to my uh, IMDb, IMDb uh, Internet Movie Database, uh, click on it, like it, comment, um, and then also if you would like to email me, uh, I can be emailed at Ernest, E-R-N-E-S-T, Marsh, M-A-R-S-H, actor, A-C-T-O-R, at gmail.com. This has been a great discussion. I'm a big fan of uh, Brother Bass Reeves, and there were some tough times back in those days, so I'm glad I'm here, but I'm living his legacy through you, sir. The, the legacy will continue. Uh, Bass Reeves is uh, Hollywood buzz right now, uh, being that there's a couple of movies that are going to feature films that are going to be done by major uh, producers and actors, major producers and actors. Uh, and one being uh, with Taylor Sheridan with Paramount, uh, partnering with uh, uh, Yoruba Saxon Productions. Well, <clears throat> we've kind of run out of time. It's been my pleasure, my new friend, and I look forward to running to you on the trail. And thank you very much. This is Jim Austin, Jim Austin Online. Don't. Don't let me have your writ. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Catch it on Jim Austin Online. It's a podcast. And thank you, Ernest, for yes, being sir. here. Thank you.